All right. Hey, good morning, everyone. Man, it's nice to see a bunch of you uh, sitting down in the pews. Just want to welcome you here. My name's Mike. I'm part of the staff team here. Also, if you're tuning in online this morning, we just want to welcome you here as well. We're glad that you can join us as well for our Sunday morning worship experience. Uh, You know, I was just getting ready for church this morning, and man, I was just reminded that simple fact that God just loves to meet with us. Like, he loves to love on us, and his Holy Spirit, his presence is here, and so I just want you to kind of keep that in mind this morning, just as the worship team leads us, and as Terry shares uh, what's on his heart this morning, maybe there's going to be something uh, from worship this morning, some of the lyrics that stand out to you, or maybe something's going to kind of jump out to you that Terry shares, and man, that could be the Holy Spirit speaking to you, and so I just want you to leave you with that, and And uh, I'll give you space to kind of wrestle through what it is that God is revealing and sharing to you this morning. So I'm going to pass it off to the worship team, and uh, they're going to lead us. Great, thanks. Uh, Would you guys please stand and sing with us this morning?
going to do is a new song. It's called Sea of Victory. So this is a song about choosing praise over fear. The truth is we may never see victory over tough things that are happening in our lives while we're here on earth. You may be struggling with mental or physical health concerns. Maybe you've been praying for reconciliation in a relationship or you feel like you can never catch a break and that life is a constant battle. Ultimately, what Jesus did on the cross is the victory. And we can say we know how our story ends because we have hope in that victory. God took what the enemy meant for evil. He meant despair and aloneness for us. But God turned it into our good so we get to spend eternity with him. The cross is our victory and we get to live in that. Please sing with us.
take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good you turn it for good you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good you turn it for good
you for being here with us this morning and for all that you do for us. God, we're so grateful for your victory on the cross and that we have hope in that. God, I pray that you would just speak to us this morning, God, that you would move in our lives. Amen. You can have a seat. All right, man, wasn't that good? Man, it's so great just to get together and just praise Jesus Christ, who is our living hope. So thank you so much, worship team, for leading us. You know, I just want to go over a number of announcements with you this morning just to give you a heads up of what's going on here. Uh, so I'm not sure if you are aware, maybe some of you are, but we are having a picnic on the lawn uh, right after second service. So this is going to be a chance just for us to gather together, to connect uh, as we head into fall. And so I know some of you are like, oh wait, how does this work first service? Just come back at 12, pack a sandwich. Uh, we'd love to see you out there. So we're going to be at the lawn just out that way. Again, come around 12 o'clock. We'd love to see all of you out. Also, we've got some uh, things that are kind of kicking off and launching that I'd love to update you on. Uh, so single and parenting, this is going to be an option uh, that you have an opportunity to join. It starts uh, September 21st, and you can still register online uh, for this. Also, we are going to be having our annual meeting uh, on September 27th, and we would love to see all of you out there. So we're going to be making some decisions and uh, we want your input on some of those things. We're going to be setting some priorities, uh, taking a look at a few different things. Uh, that's going to be September 27th uh, in the evening. So keep your calendar open for that. Also, we've been thinking about uh, how do we restart uh, kids groups. So parents, uh, if you have kids kind of age two to kindergarten, uh, you're going to want to mark this down. We are looking at a potential start date uh, for age two to kindergarten kids on October uh, the 18th. So uh, you can register your kids online uh, for kids groups already. Uh, you can do that through our website, winklermb.com. And then also, if you're in junior high or high school, uh, we want to let you know that we are starting up uh, youth again. So we're going to be kicking off on Monday at 7.30 for junior high and then high school on Wednesday at 7.30. We're going to be out in the lawn. So uh, yeah, so I just encourage you guys, if you're coming, bring friends, dress with the weather in mind. We'd love to see junior high, high school students. We'd love to see you guys out this next week. Also, uh, on social media and as a church, man, we've really wanted to get behind schools in this season. Man, they have a lot of uh, questions to navigate, a lot of hard decisions to make, and 
we want to support them in this time. So over the last week and a half or so, we've just been praying intentionally. We've been picking kind of one school uh, every, every day, and we've been praying for them. And uh, we've asked you uh, to join us uh, in that, and we've also asked you to nominate a school of your choice Uh, over social media that uh, we want to give an opportunity to bless. So whichever kind of nominated school uh, we choose, uh, we're going to have a treat and we're going to give the staff and teachers there a special gift. And so we asked you to do this over social media. So I actually have a bunch of your comments on social media. I know a number of you posted. So thanks for that. So we're going to pick one and we're going to pick the school this morning that wins. So actually, Natalie, do you just want to quickly come up here and draw a name for me? putting you on the spot here a little bit. Yeah, there we go. All right, this is going to be the winning school. Thanks, Natalie. All right, so winning school is going to be Border Valley School. Congratulations, Border Valley. Oh, yeah, for sure. I see we got a number of Border Valley fans there. I know the Zacharias family over there. I know there's a number of others of you that have gone to Border Valley. So actually, I'm going to read off the comments. So this was actually posted by Lisa Thiessen. Uh, And Lisa Thiessen says, Border Valley School needs to win this. They have gone above and beyond in every aspect of school life from March when the teachers were thrown into remote learning to September where they have answered countless emails and calls from anxious parents to making school seem fun and exciting today. Mr. Giesbrecht even had a cardboard fish that he created to be able to show students in a super fun way what two meters look like. I saw so many smiles as I picked up my daughter after school, and that is because each and every staff member at BVS makes the students feel at ease and loved. Best school ever. Man, I love hearing that. Thank you, Lisa, for sharing your comment and nominating Border Valley. Border Valley, we're going to get some, uh, some treats out to the, to the staff there. So, man, isn't that great just to encourage our schools, to encourage your staff? Like, I love that we get to be able to do that. So thanks for putting in your comments. We appreciate it. Also, kind of on another celebratory note, uh, I want to let you know that uh, Aaron Heinrichs has been baptized. And, man, just uh, taking that next step of faith in her walk with Jesus. And so... Uh, We want to partner and support her, and so one of the ways that we can do that is by praying for her. And so she's asked and given us a specific uh, request that we can pray for her. And she says, I would like prayer for continuous healing for my mental health, uh, for my relationship with God to grow stronger, and to be a light and shine in the darkness. Man, fantastic things to pray for. So even as you think about it the next week, let's be praying for Aaron and And actually, Aaron's at SBC right now, and man, I just think of stories like this. You know, Aaron has been in this church for a number of years, and I think of uh, all of the uh, generous donations and the gifts uh, and the financial support that you have put into the mission of WMBC. And man, for those of you that have been giving and sowing in here, man, take a look at this story. It's your story too. So these are things that we kind of get to celebrate and uh, as we financially give. And so I just want to say thank you for all your uh, generous giving as well. And we just celebrate with Erin and her family. She takes the next step. Also, parents, I want to give you a heads up on something that we are doing this year. Uh, We want to support you. We want to partner with you. And one of the ways that, that we get to do that is Man, we know that when it comes to kids, that there's so many moments and almost kind of milestones that happen in a kid's life, right? I think of, I think of a kid going off to kindergarten. I think of, uh, you know, your son or daughter who graduates or maybe who turns 13. And we know that there's kind of these milestone moments in your son or daughter's life. And we want to be there to support you and to help champion you and your son and your daughter and to take uh, the most that you can out of those moments and out of those seasons of life. And so what we'd like to do actually for the month of September, uh, so for parents, if you have a son or daughter who's turning 13, either just turned 13 or is turning 13 in this next year, We'd love the opportunity just to equip and resource you uh, because we know that becoming a teenager, that transition into adulthood is a big next step. And so we've got some resource packages uh, that we think will help support you in this next year as you uh, lead your teenager through their first teenage year. So all you need to do is just, uh, there's a table in the foyer, just sign up. Uh, on, the, on the foyer, or on the table in the foyer there, and we'll get one of those resource packages to you, and we'd love to help equip and support you. So take advantage of that. 
Uh, also, Colleen uh, is going to be coming up, and she's going to be sharing in just a moment uh, with kind of our kids group feature. Uh, but before she does that, I just want to give you a heads up that uh, Terry was supposed to speak this morning, and he is still speaking, but he came down uh, with a cold, and it was not feeling well. And so just kind of for precautionary sake, uh, he decided to pre-record his sermon uh, yesterday. So that being Saturday, he didn't think that he'd be able to kind of do it this morning. So uh, we're going to have a video here that we're going to watch for Terry. So he's not going to be with us. He's maybe tuning in online later. And so we're going to just, uh, after Colleen sharing, uh, done sharing, we're going to watch Terry and what he would have shared with us. I know he was really disappointed uh, kind of a little, a little bit annoyed that he couldn't be with us here this morning, but uh, we're still going to get an opportunity to hear from him. So uh, I'm going to invite Colleen up, and then why don't we pray as we continue in our Sunday morning service. Yeah, God, I just thank you uh, so much that you are here with us. I just thank you, Holy Spirit, that you speak to us. And so I just pray, even as Colleen shares, as Terry shares, uh, Holy Spirit, that you would highlight things uh, that you're speaking directly to us. And I just thank you, uh, Jesus, that you are our living hope, that you're with us, that our victory is found in you. And I just pray, Father, as we talk about relationships, uh, God, I just pray that you would bless our relationships with coworkers, with friends at school, with family, with in-laws, neighbors. Uh, God, and I just pray, Father, as believers and followers of Jesus, that we would model what it is that relationships can look like. Um, because you ultimately modeled this for us in sending your son, Jesus. And so, God, I just pray that you would give us a glimpse of that today. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, everyone. Just wondering if this has ever happened in your family, all right? Hey, she took my stuff. I had it first. No, you didn't. I, yes, you did. No, yes, no, yes. Mom! Has that ever happened in your family? If this has happened with your brothers and sisters, let's put some hands up. Moms and dads, let's go. Come on, let's be real. All right. I know this is not just kids. It may not look the same, but I know what happens. So let's take a look at uh, what's happening with our friendship this week. We have ta been talking about that in the past, using your words and actions to show others that you care. And you know, it's hard getting along with our brothers and sisters. It's not easy. But you know, animals have the same trouble with their brothers and sisters. Take a look at this. This is a mole rat. He looks kind of uh, scary. And just picture this is your big brother. Now, if he was walking down the tunnel, you would have probably hundreds of brothers and sisters if you were a mole rat. And when your big brother walks down the tunnel and you're the little guy, he just goes, he just pushes the little guys out of his way. That's not very nice. Let's take a look at this one. These are called uh, cattle egrets. And when these guys, when mom and dad go off to go find some food, these guys find the little ones in the nest. If you're the small one or the weak one, over the nest you go. You're too small. That's not very nice either. But you know what? Thankfully, most animal siblings do get along. Let's take a look at the elephants. So for example, older elephant children, they look after, they babysit their little ones. And for otters, sea otters, they almost spend almost all of their time together. And in fact, they will even hold hands in the water so they don't float apart. And if you take a look at lions, lion sisters stay together for life in a group called a pride. So, you know, here's the thing. When you live with someone all the time, like a brother or a sister, even moms and dads, it's easy to get on each other's nerves. And maybe you're getting on their nerves too, just possibly. And the next thing you know, you're saying things and you're fussing and fighting and you're probably saying things that you shouldn't be saying. Well, friendship is using your words and actions to show others that you care. So Pastor Terry is going to be talking about our tongue and how amazing, our, the, the amazing power that our tongue actually has. So I want you to take a look at this toothpaste container, and I want you to imagine you as the container, and your words is the toothpaste, all right? So 
When we use our words, we say good words to our brothers and sisters. That's awesome. Things that make them feel great. We tell them how good they are at their drawing, whatever it is. Good words, we want that to come out, right? And that's awesome. But then we call our big brother a name. We use other words that hurt our family. Or we say things, we lie about something. Or we talk about people behind our backs. All ages do that. And you know, that comes out and I don't know. That's that, I don't want that out. That was, oops, that was a mistake. But I can't get it back in. It came out of our container, out of our mouth. That's what happens when we use words. Our words can either hurt people or they can show others that you care. And we have to be really careful when it comes out because it doesn't go back in. So, you know, Jesus knows how hard it is to live with brothers and sisters because they can get on your nerves. They got on his nerves too. He had lots of brothers and sisters. But, you know, you can ask Jesus to just pour love out of you. Just give me love, Jesus, because I need to love my family. And he will do that for you. Because he wants you, he will help you to be kind. He will help you to be patient. And more than anything, he will help you to forgive. Because everyone makes mistakes. We all say things that we shouldn't. It, all, it often comes out of our containers, doesn't it? But you know what? You can ask for forgiveness, and Jesus always forgives, just like we can extend to other people. So, you know, this week, this week's Bible story is all about friendship. You can check it out online. And it's about a friendship between David and Jonathan. These guys, they weren't brothers, but they were pretty close. They were like brothers. And here's a bit of a spoiler alert. So, Jonathan's dad didn't like David, and he threw a spear at him. And so if you want to find out to see whether it hit David, check out the video. So in your activity packages, you will all see that I'm wearing just this beautiful ring here. This is called a friendship ring. Has anybody made their friendship ring already? Oh, there we go. We got one. Nice. We got another one. Has anyone eaten their friendship ring already? Hopefully not. Okay, so here's what you do. You make your friend. This is an opportunity for you guys. There's, you can make two. There's more than just one in there. And I, this is your opportunity to show others that you care. I want you to make a ring. One could be for yourself. But the other one I want you to think about, maybe you weren't so nice to your brother this week, or you've said or done something that you kind of need to show your brother or sister that you care. Here's an opportunity to give this away, all right? Kids, it is time for our message. In the back of your books, there's something called sermon notes. Grab your pen and paper, well, your, your paper and your pen, and I want you to write down things. If there's questions when Pastor Cherry's talking, it's like, hmm, what that means or you want to know if there's verses that he talks about write it down and talk about it with your parents afterwards so right now we're going to have some fun with a cool video and then pastor terry will be on we'll see you guys next week good morning wmbc uh let me try that again just so long it's a well-oiled machine <laughs> um I don't, should I be? Should I be here? Here? <laughs> Sounds good. Soon. Well, good morning, everyone. My name is. Wait a second. <laughs> hey, Dave. I'm just gonna close this door. Oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 
A number of years ago, I was part of a staff... Uh, let's start again. <laughs> Series on, let's start again. Hey, good morning. For the year 2020... Actually, let's start again. I don't, know, I'm like, I don't know why I said good morning. I don't think I need to. <laughs> this is... Yeah, it's uh, something, I don't know what we're talking about, but ooh, it's gonna be good. <laughs> Hold on. I was like, are you okay, yeah, yeah, it's okay. Hold on. <laughs> hey, welcome to WMC Line, uh, Online. Good to have you with us. Uh, let me try that whole thing again, because I said WMC Line. Give you a little bit uh, of. Goop, 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 goop. <laughs> <laughs> Don't put that one in, Leva. <laughs> I can go whenever. I know it's already recording. This is for the blooper reel now. I don't know. You can't you can't plan a blooper reel. It's not a blooper. That's all you need to know. It's the whole thing. Yeah. All right. Okay, you ready to go? Cool. Hmm. No, I can't think of one. <sighs> Terry took something to tattoo me. Tattoo me. This is good. Terry took time off to travel to Tatooine. The human torch was denied a bank loan. <laughs> uh, that's good. Am I in the right place if I'm right? Does it matter? I can be Mike. I love standing behind things. Feels, feels safe back here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I don't. I, I'm probably only like three inches. I'm not a tall person. The whole time. Uh, okay, I probably didn't have my Bible yet. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> well, good morning, everyone. Uh, this, oh, no, <laughs> hold on. <laughs> We're good here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and again, uh, you know, like I gotta change that. Hold on, I lost my thought. Pause it for one second. And, okay, now let's restart that. Um, actually, do you have a pen? I could, I could just take it out. There. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That almost worked out perfectly. <laughs> you jerk. Come on. Well, good morning to those of you that are watching online, or if uh, maybe you're Checking this out at a, at a later. Let me know. You <laughs> jerk. Oh, you gotta put, turn the red light off for a second. That's all for this week. Uh, come back next week. We'll finish up our look at Second John. Uh, uh, see you next week.
your mistake. All my best stuff is not filmed. All right, take 10. Huh. Well, if you ever wanted to pull back the curtain uh, and see what happens behind the scenes at WMBC, there you go. Are you, are you happy now? Oh man, that was, that was my first time seeing that. Well done, Levi. Good job. It, it's kind of a fitting introduction to this morning's message where we're going to be speaking on how we manage our mouths, the words that we, that we use. Now, when we we record on film, we get the privilege of doing do-overs, a second take, but in life, oh man, we don't get any do-overs. And that's really important because words have extraordinary power. The words that you speak internally to yourself and externally to, to others, those words have power. Now, Quick pause. If you're watching this in person in the sanctuary, you realize I'm not there. This is pre-recorded. Uh, you know, six months I went without any cold-like symptoms. This week I had a sore throat. So just to be prudent, to be cautious, I'm not able to be with you uh, on Sunday. If you're watching this online, hey, it's just per usual. Here I am on the screen. There you go. If you weren't with us last week, we started a new series on relationships. And we're focusing our attention on our energy and how to build strong, healthy relationships, particularly relationships with our family and, and not just in the home, because last week we looked at how Jesus broadens the definition of family to include our faith community. Yeah, you know, I think we all have these inner circles of relationships with with friends that really function as family. And that's where we started last week. I gave you kind of four guideposts to consider. So one, family is where my credibility is established. It's, it's with the people that know me best, where my mask is pulled off. They're going to see who my true character is. Uh, family is where faith is formed. So between, uh, you know, with your family, with your friends, are you building each other up in, in faith and in hope and love? Family is to be our place of refuge. You know, it's those inner circles of belonging that we, that we want to find, um, and havens of blessing and, and places of peace. And finally, family is where life can start over. And we're, and we're talking about the power of forgiveness. And if you would speak to, with my wife, Julia, my girls, they would tell you that I am not perfect, that I need plenty of do-overs, I need forgiveness, I need grace. Like we, we all need forgiveness to, to reach our true potential. So over the next few weeks, we're going to look at key aspects of relationships. And this morning, we're going to look at a, an important scripture text that gonna, is going to teach us how to manage our mouth. So turn with me in your Bible or your Bible app to James chapter 3, verses 1 to 12. I'm going to begin by just reading through the whole passage in one go. James chapter 3 on controlling the tongue. So dear brothers and sisters, not many of you should become teachers in the church for we who teach will be judged more strictly. Indeed, we, could, we all make many mistakes for if we could control our tongues, we would be perfect and can also control ourselves in every other way. You know, we can make a large horse go wherever we want by means of a small bit in its mouth, and a small rudder makes a huge ship turn wherever the pilot chooses to go, even though the winds are strong. In the same way, the tongue is a small thing that makes grand speeches. But a tiny spark can set a great forest on fire. And among all the parts of the body, the tongue is a flame of fire. It is a whole world of wickedness corrupting your entire body. It can, it can set your whole life on fire, for it is set on fire by hell itself. People can tame all kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and fish, but no one can tame the tongue. It is restless and evil and full of deadly poison. And sometimes it, it praises our Lord and Father, and sometimes it curses those who have been made in the image of God. And so blessing and cursing come pouring out of the same mouth. Surely, my brothers and sisters, this is not right, James says. <clears throat> Does a spring of water, uh, of water bubble out with both fresh water and bitter water? Does a fig tree produce olives or a grapevine produce figs? No, and you can't draw fresh water from a salty spring. 
the reading of God's word and James' teaching on how to manage our mouths. Let's pray together. So God, we just invite your Holy Spirit now to, to make the words of James come alive for us. We know that you have something for us. Would you, would you be able to apply this to our relationships in our lives? God, we just uh, open ourselves up to this teaching, to your word, to what you have for us this morning. In your name we pray, amen. So James, the author here, is actually a brother of Jesus. And not that long ago, a couple of weeks ago, we were looking at the letter of Jude, who is also another brother of Jesus or half-brother. And they introduce themselves in the same way. They don't actually introduce themselves as a brother of Jesus, but instead they, they say they're a slave to Jesus Christ. Uh, the, the word is doulos, Greek word doulos, which means a bond servant. It's someone, it's a slave who freely and willingly chooses to be bonded to that master for life. And, and again, what kind of evidence would it take for, for you to believe that your brother, your sibling, it truly is the son of God? I mean, there was a powerful encounter that James and Jude must have had to believe that, that Jesus is who he says he is. Now, the book of James functions very much like the book of Proverbs in the Old Testament. It's full of all these uh, short sayings, kind of wisdom. Uh, he dresses all sorts of topics and themes. And, and a major emphasis for James throughout the letter is, is that true faith is revealed practically in, in, in our behaviors and, and the ways in which we express kindness and, and sacrifice. I mean, anyone can spout off a few spiritual truths, but that doesn't mean they have true faith. And that's kind of how James starts chapter 3. He says, Dear brothers and sisters, not many of you should become teachers in the church, for we who teach will be judged more strictly. Now, in his context, many were trying to uh, appear like they were experts in the teaching of God's word. And so James is warning them, hey, teachers are going to be judged more strictly. Now, this is... Uh, this is a bonus thought for me here, so it's a freebie, okay? But I didn't want to miss the cultural connection or, or this moment. It appears that many of us uh, on social media, in the coffee talk, we become experts overnight, right? All of a sudden, we're experts, um, and we know better than scientists or doctors or teachers or politicians, church leaders, uh, right? I think James has something to speak to us here at WMEC, that, that our first posture when it comes to managing our mouths should be to shut it, right? He says, first be a learner and a listener. Uh, he says earlier in chapter one, uh, be quick to listen and slow to speak. And I think that's just real practical advice from James here. Now, according to random internet research that I did this week, uh, we on average, the average person speaks about 30 conversations per day. The, the myth that women speak more than men seems to have been debunked in recent studies. Uh, looks like we speak on average uh, of 16,000 words per day. Anecdotally, I'm, I'm not sure if that's true. Uh, I don't know. I work with Dinah, and she seems to have way more words than, than I do. I don't know. <laughs> Strong gusts up to like 25, 30,000 words a day we're talking about. Uh, if you don't have someone like that in your life that talks a lot, that probably means it's you. You're that person, all right? So just take notice of that. The, listen, the vast majority of our lives is spent in some sort of communication in some way. They say a, a year of our life is spent talking about the weather. And, and I think for those of us who live in Manitoba, that means like two years of our life are spent talking about the weather. All this to say is that if we want to build strong, healthy relationships, communication is vital. How we use our words, how we manage our mouth is so important to building strong, healthy families, uh, to building strong, healthy relationships. And I think James, in his, chapter 3 here, gives us three important principles or takeaways uh, to learn from. The first principle that I think James is getting at is this. My mouth directs where I want to go. And so in verses 3 to 4, James is using the example of, the, of a bit in the horse's mouth or the, the rudder on a small ship. You know, I think back to my girls who took horseback riding lessons at the camp. 
as opposed to horse neck riding. I don't know why they say a horse back riding, but anyways, that's just a weird thing to think about. Uh, but it was incredible how our little girls at the time, with the right amount of confidence and the right amount of tension on the reins, could control these huge animals. And, and James says that's how the tongue operates for us. That's how our words operate. Uh, you know, I was thinking how God spoke the universe into being. And, and how we're made in the image of God. We're co-creators with him. And so what does that mean for our words? And, and I think this is true, that our words create worlds, right? Our words create new realities. It, it changes the atmosphere in a room. It changes the dynamic of a relationship. Your words, James writes, can determine the direction of your life, which means that if you want to change the direction of your life, if you want to change the direction of your family, uh, of a friendship, of a relationship, change your vocabulary. Change your words. Now, James keeps going. <clears throat> it's almost like the, he, want, he, he, he doubles down, right? He wants the reader to understand how important your words are, the severe consequences of our words. And so he, keeps, he uses a, a new image, uh, reading in verse 5, <clears throat> in the same way, the tongue is a small thing that makes grand speeches, just like the bit in the horse's mouth, a rudder in a small ship. And then he goes, but a tiny spark can set a great forest on fire. And among all the parts of the body, the tongue is a flame of fire. It's a, it's a whole world of wickedness corrupting your entire body. <clears throat> now, James moves to the, to the image of fire because of its destructive nature. Growing up on the farm, uh, fire was a, was a powerful tool. Uh, and it was a lot of fun as a kid, uh, especially as a young teenager. And so I was, I was thinking of my memory. We, would, uh, we were burning the flax straw on a, on a field. And so someone would, would drive the truck. I was sitting in the back with the tiger torch. Uh, we would go slowly and we would light the field on fire. Now, as we were making our way off the field, somehow we must have driven over some of the, the flax straw and it got wrapped around the drive shaft. And so as we were leaving, I'm, I'm noticing smoke coming up to the floorboards of, of the truck. And I'm like, Dad, I think the truck's on fire. Uh, and it was amazing how, right, just a little spark can do incredible damage. And, and James says our words are like fire particularly negative words. They can have such a destructive nature. And that's James' second point, that my mouth can destroy what I have. I think every one of us lives with the memory of, of words that we said in the heat of a moment, uh, maybe words that we said spoken in anger that we wish we could take back. Or maybe they were words spoken over, over us. You know, I, I, again, I have this privilege of pastoring people and walking through their journeys and their challenges of life. And, and as I pastor you, there are many of you that, that carry the weight of, of a word, of, of a negative word, of a destructive word, of a lie or a motto that, that continues to just be this banner over your life. You know, actually, I, I just invite, oh man, I just invite all of us just to pause for a second. Would you just, let's pray together. Um, so Holy Spirit, I just now in this moment as we pause, and I, I invite you to, to reveal to us, would you open our, our eyes and our ears, if there's been a word <clears throat> that's carried weight in our lives, if there's been a lie or a motto that's, that's just been this banner over our life. And maybe that's a word that was spoken to you as a young child. Maybe that was a word spoken in anger by a spouse or a parent or a sibling. Maybe it's the words that you speak to yourself every single day. I wonder if there's a banner over your life that needs to be taken down. So 
So Jesus, we want to listen to your voice now. And we, we ask you to, to speak truth into our lives, speak truth into our hearts, into our wounded places. If you were to take that banner down and replace it with something else, Jesus, what would you say to us, to me? Hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Some of you had a word. Some of you thought about a moment or a relationship in which you spoke, spoke something that, that you wish you hadn't. And, and, and we don't want the past to define anyone's future, do we? We don't want a word to, to, to carry that much control. And so maybe there's some, some steps you need to take this week, whether it's having a difficult conversation or asking for forgiveness you know, again, <clears throat> forgiveness just holds the power to start new, to start a new reality, a new relationship, a new kind of relationship. You know, when we deal with fire, <clears throat> often we have to set up kind of precautions, right? We take safety me measures, we, we set boundaries. I'm not going to risk, you know, lighting a fire in, in this dry grass uh, right? I mean, think of what's going on with the West Coast, the pyrotechnics for a gender reveal party. So we have to be safe with fire. You know, I'm going to light it in this metal fire pit instead. And, and I think those same kind of precautions are true with our, of our words. We need to set up guardrails or boundaries. And when we talk about managing our mouth right now, it's also about like managing our fingers and thumbs, right? What we say on, on social media or through by text. Uh, please don't have intense emotional conversations by text or by, by written form. You know, one of the, a simple rule I have is that if it, it takes me a few minutes to craft a sentence in an email or a text that usually means that it's too nuanced or there's too much emotion there. I need to have that conversation in, in person or at least verbally. Now, words have extraordinary power. And James writes, my words can destroy what I have. So my mouth can direct me where I go. My mouth can destroy what I have. And thirdly, as we get to verses 9 to 12, James is teaching that my mouth defines or really reveals who I am. And so he writes, sometimes my mouth, it praises our Lord and Father, and sometimes it curses those who have been made in the image of God. And so Blessing and cursing come pouring out of the same mouth. Surely, my brothers and sisters, this is not right. Does a spring of water bubble out with both fresh water and bitter water? Does a fig tree produce olives or a grapevine produce figs? No, and you can't produce fresh water from a salty spring. James is saying it's my mouth, it's my words that are going to reveal my inner character. It's going to reveal the, the direction of my heart. <clears throat> You know, when you and I go see a doctor, uh, they'll ask you to stick out your tongue and say, ah, if you don't, they'll jam a wooden stick in there, so do it. Um, but your tongue is what reveals kind of indicators of your overall health. It gives you a picture of what's going on inside of you. And the words that come out of your mouth, they're symptoms of what's happening on a deeper level inside of your heart. Jesus says, <clears throat> for whatever is in your heart determines what you say. And so James, he's just, he's just really blunt and practical here. He's like, who are you, right? Are you a person of blessing? Are you going to speak words of life? Or are you a person of cursing? So you're going to speak words of death. So when we begin to take stock of the inventory of the words that we use, the words that we, that we tell people, the words that we put on social media, the words that we write, well, what do those re words reveal about who we are? Who or what do we promote? Is it complaining, bitterness, gossip, vulgarity, sarcasm, divisiveness, selfishness, or kindness, encouragement, uh, hope, peace, unity, healing, forgiveness, gentleness, humility, compassion? Right? Is it words of death or words of life? James 
he's making faith practical here. Like if you trust and believe in the transforming grace of Jesus Christ in your life, then that transformation should happen in your speech. You should speak differently because of the gospel. What do the words that we say, that you say, reveal about what you stand for and what you believe in? See, our words over time trains our hearts. We become, listen, this is important, we become the words we speak. And, and, and so if you constantly speak words of ne negativity, you're going to train your heart to become negative. You're going to become a, a person who's bitter and gratitude. If you wor speak words of kindness and positivity, you're going to train your heart to be hope-filled and, and free. The words that we speak, again, it could be your thought life speaking to yourself, the words that we speak to our family, to our friends, to others, have extraordinary power. Words can inspire nations. Words can heal a broken heart. Words can make love real. Words can defeat injustice. Words can calm a crying child. An ancient prophet once said, uh, the words we speak become the house that we live in. And so what kind of home are you creating with your words? And here's the kind of the weird thing, right? The surprising thing is how common and easy it is. And I'll, I'll just speak for myself. How I can speak to my family with the least amount of kindness or grace. Uh, like Maya Angelou wrote, wrote, if you have only one smile in you, give it to the people you love. Don't be surly at home and then go out into the street and start grinning, good morning, at strangers. But isn't that how it is? Like, uh, that it's often, it's not my family or my, my inner circle, the people that I rely on the most, that get the best of me, get the best of my words. Uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of John Gottman. Uh, he wrote the book, Seven Principles for Making Marriage Work. Uh, if you want to improve your marriage relationship, that's a great book to check out. Check out Gottman's uh, website. Lots to explore there. He kind of took a research-based approach to why do relationships fail? And when it comes to managing conflict or difficult conversations, statistics reveal that 96% of the time you can predict the outcome of a conversation based on the first, like, two to three minutes of interaction just by the tone or the words that we use. And, and I wonder if our homes would have less conflict if, if we would use the simple kindness and politeness that we often extend to strangers on the street if we would extend that to our, our spouse or to our siblings or to our parents. If we become the words we speak, WBC, what words will define your life? Like what words do you want spoken that will speak about who you are and what you stand for and what you believe in? That's a great conversation to have as a family. What, what's your top five words, right, that you want to have coming out of your mouth? And choose your words wisely. Because James says your words create life or death, blessing or cursing. Words have extraordinary power. James teaches that words determine the direction of your life. They, they can destroy. They can have such a destructive nature. And they reveal who we are and the direction of our heart. Let me pray with you. <clears throat> so God, of all the voices, of all the words, we want to we wanna hear from you. And again, I know... Just this call to be good listeners. And, and as we think of the relationships that we have in our life and the power that words have, I, oh, I just pray that you would guide our hearts into speaking words of hope and truth and, and to be a people of blessing and refuge that would be true in our homes. And God, that, that you would break the power of destructive words in people's lives in Jesus' name. You would break off lies that, that, that we would, wouldn't carry anything anymore that, that is not of you, that is not truth. And so guide us into this week and into the conversations that we're going to have, 30 conversations per day, 30 opportunities to speak words of life. 
God, um, we just invite your Holy Spirit to guide us into each of those conversations. In your name we pray, amen.